I hate to break it to you, but if you invest in these, you're a sucker. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now today's video is all about why investing in copper bullion is for suckers. You should never do it, don't buy it. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be telling you about a much, much better place to invest your money. Now as most of you watching know, silver and gold have skyrocketed in the last couple weeks and silver has reached 25 bucks an ounce and gold has reached almost $2,000 an ounce. And when that happens, people start flocking to invest in precious metals like crazy. And that's fantastic. I want more people to learn about investing in precious metals. I want more people to join the coin collecting gold bug and silver stacker communities. To me, that's what this is all about. And that's why I make these videos in the first place. It's my mission. In the ideal world, new investors would do their due diligence before investing in a particular metal. They would learn before they put their hard-earned money into something, right? But unfortunately, that's not always the case. And on top of that, when people are lining up to spend their hard-earned money, well, there's also going to be a whole bunch of unscrupulous people ready to do anything at any cost to take it from them. And that's what brings us to our discussion about investing in copper. Now let's get one thing straight. I'm not here to bash copper as a metal. Copper in and of itself is an amazing, amazing building tool. I mean, it's used in practically every construction application, in almost every piece of electronics. I mean, you go into any building, crack a pickaxe through the wall, and you're gonna likely see some copper pipe well, better yet, maybe don't smack a pickaxe through your wall at your office or your school or your home. Just trust me on that. And open up any electronic and you'll find in the motor or in the wiring, you're going to find copper. It is an incredible metal. And that's kind of what makes it so easy for con artists to convince well-meaning people to invest in it. So let's take a look at some of the copper bullion that I bought specifically for this video. No, I did not invest in it. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what these con artists uh, tell you when they're trying to convince you to invest in physical copper bullion. Copper picker here. Well, these are the eight different one ounce copper bullion pieces that I bought specifically for this video. That's right. I threw away my hard earned money for you guys to teach you all about why copper bullion like this is for suckers. So I bought six different one ounce rounds and two different one ounce bars. Now, admittedly, even though I think these are terrible for investment purposes, they do have some nice designs, they do have some cool eye appeal, and I think it is worthwhile sharing them with you. So why don't we take a look at each one individually, get an idea for maybe why some people are drawn to them, and then we'll continue into the reasons why you should not be buying these. All right, the first one up is this 1909 SVDB Lincoln Wheat Cent. You can see here it's got the little VDB, but instead of saying one cent, it says one ounce, 999 fine copper. Now you'll see a lot of different copper rounds like this that are modeled after US coins, and I actually think it's kind of cool. The 1909 SVDB, of course, is the most iconic Lincoln Wheat Cent there is, and it is a copper cent, so I had to get this one. Pretty cool, actually. The next round that we have here is also based on a US coin, but a much, much, much less well-known one. This one is actually the Indian princess head, the large head version, and this was used on the $1 and $3 gold coins back in the mid-1800s. This is a really, really cool design. I really like it. That's why I picked this one out. And you can see on the reverse, it also has copper 999 fine USA. It has sort of a heraldic eagle, which is very common on many US coins, and it says, one AVDP ounce. Now, gold and silver are measured in troy ounces, while copper is measured in pounds, which is actually broken down into what we normally call just ounces, but these are a verdepois or a verdepois ounces, and that's just a normal ounce. You'll see this a lot on copper ounce coins. The next round is really interesting because it's an actual piece of history, and I mean that literally. This particular round is a little piece of numismatic or precious metals investing history, and that's why I picked this one. So you see on the top it has the sort of libertarian phrase, don't tread on me, as well as the image of the iconic snake, but below it it says Tea Party. Now for those of you who don't remember, the Tea Party was a political organization that sort of sprung up within the Republican Party in the aftermath of the 2008-2009 financial crisis. And what's really interesting is that because it was sort of a libertarian focused contingent of the party, there was a lot of marketing efforts made by the precious metals industry towards them. And because of the explosion in value of gold and silver, there was a lot of marketing dollars sent towards Tea Party people 
And there were some less scrupulous people that were marketing copper to these people as well. And this was an example of that from that time that was meant to sort of get people to hop on this total BS copper bullion train. So in any case, a pretty interesting piece of history. And this one I'm actually kind of happy that I bought. Next up is another sort of libertarian focused uh, round and that is the Colt 45 single action army. And it's pretty funny, it has the Colt 45, the iconic pistol there, but it also says production 1873 to infinity. So it will go on forever and forever. So this is pretty cool. I like the design, so I picked this one out. It also has this heraldic eagle on the, on the reverse. You can see that a lot of these are made by the same company and they have the same reverses, but different obverses. So this is just another cool one and uh, you know, it's about your second amendment rights. And of course, you can't forget about the veterans. This is Vietnam veterans, and it has an actually a really beautiful design of the map of Vietnam with a U.S. helicopter uh, flying over it. It says 1965 to 1975, and this is just a pretty cool design, and that's the reason I picked it. Again, it has the same reverse, so nothing special there, but still, you know, a little shout out to our veterans. So any veterans watching, a big shout out to you. Now, this is actually my favorite round that I bought, and I really like the message. It says debt slave here and it has a child to a grown man to an old man it's sort of the progression and the message here is absolutely right right do not get into deep debt I'm not talking about mortgages I'm not talking about business loans or strategic leverage I'm talking about the consumer debt that sort of cripples a lot of American society and also the global society as well so this is a great message but it's ironic because it is on a coin or a round I should say that really is going to make you in indebted uh, rather than help you out of debt. So listen to the message, but don't buy copper. So that was it for the copper rounds, and we also have a couple copper bars. This one I actually think, now that I see it in person, the design is really, really busy. It's based on the iconic Black Eagle Silver Certificate banknote. Uh, it's an 1899, very, very iconic banknote, but it looks pretty, you know, just sort of scrunched in there on this little uh, one ounce bar. And on the other side, it's just sort of like a generic looking $1 banknote and it's kind of busy and again, I'm not so into it. It was much cooler uh, on the website. And last but not least is actually one of my favorite designs overall. This is the one ounce periodic table themed copper bar. And you can see here that it has sort of all the elemental information that you would see on the periodic table. And I just really like this clean design. It's funny because in the last grab bag I got, I did the grab bag exchange. We're gonna be doing another one of those on Patreon soon. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, the links are below and you can participate in one of our grab bag exchanges. But in my last one, I actually got this exact thing, but I had already ordered this one. They are slightly different. So I think they're from different manufacturers because one is more of a squared and one is more of a rounded side. But in any case, these are actually pretty cool as novelties, not as investments. Let me know which one you like best in the comments below. So what they try and do is convince you that copper is the next silver. And that's their main pitch. They say, you know, back in the 90s, silver was like four or five bucks an ounce, and now it's at $25. You could have made a fortune if you invested back then. Copper is at only three dollars. You gotta get in now before it's too late. Now that comparison between copper and silver is total BS. And I'll tell you in a minute why. If you think you know, put it down in the comments below and let's see if you got it right. But before I get to that, let me tell you two really important reasons why copper is not going to skyrocket in price like gold and silver have. First off, copper is not a precious metal like gold and silver are. It's a base metal, and that's a really important distinction because gold and silver have for thousands of years been seen as a means of preserving wealth and as a hedge against inflation in more recent times. And guess what? That is not the case for copper. And don't take my word for it, there's literally thousands of years of precedent from pretty much every society on the face of the earth to prove that point. Look, in times of economic uncertainty, kind of like right now I might add, people flock in droves to put their money into safe havens like gold and silver. And when demand increases like that, but the supply of gold and silver remains relatively fixed, the price in dollars goes up. It's not rocket science, it's basic economics. And that is not what happens in economic uncertain times with copper. And while on the topic of supply and demand, this video has a major demand for likes. 
And you, my friends, are the supply. So why don't we take a little field trip down below the title of this video, let's hit the like button, and while we're down there, let's hit that big old red subscribe button too. I'd really appreciate it. Now, the second reason why copper is not gonna skyrocket in price like gold and silver has is that almost all of copper is used for industrial purposes. 63% of copper is used for construction and electrical purposes alone. That's a staggering amount. That means that unless there is like a tenfold demand increase for construction and electrical products, there's not gonna be a 10x boom in price for your copper. And look, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at the data. The compound annual growth rate for copper consumption worldwide is just about 3% annually. And guess what? Copper production over the next 10 years is expected to grow at you guessed it, roughly 3% per year. So supply is keeping up almost exactly with demand. So in other words, something insanely crazy would have to happen to get copper to go from $3 to say $30. Now I also wanna point out, I'm not a professional economist, but you don't need to be. Everything I'm saying is very, very basic economics and maybe a little bit oversimplified, but directionally absolutely correct. And as promised, the number one reason why the copper-silver comparison is total BS is because copper and silver are traded with totally different units of measurement. That's right, when they talk about silver back in the 90s having been three bucks and today copper is three bucks, that is a total BS comparison because silver is traded in troy ounces but copper is traded in pounds. That means back in the 90s when silver was three bucks, it was three bucks per troy ounce. And today, copper isn't three bucks per troy ounce, it's not three bucks per regular ounce, but it's three bucks per pound. That means there are 16 ounces in a pound. So divide that $3 price by 16 and then you can sort of compare them to a silver troy ounce. Okay, so think about it like this. Each of these one ounce copper rounds and bars cost me about $2 a piece on eBay. And if each of these are one ounce and there's 16 ounces in a pound, that means these are selling at a rate of $32 per pound. With today's copper spot price at $3 per pound, that means each of these copper rounds and copper bars is selling for more than a 1,000% premium over spot. That is bananas. That's legit like paying $250 for a generic silver round today. It's this lack of understanding about the units of measurement that these unscrupulous copper bullion dealers rely on and prey on to convince you, or trick you rather, into spending your hard-earned money on junk. So unless you would pay $250 for a generic silver round today, don't invest in $2 generic copper rounds either. And after watching this, if you still do, well then, yeah, you're a sucker. Now before you all destroy me in the comment section, there are three exceptions to this rule. The first exception is buying a couple of copper rounds or bars as a novelty just because you like it, right? There's nothing wrong with spending 20 bucks and buying like 10 of these and enjoying them and enjoying the design and just having them because you like them. I mean, it's like going to the movies. 20 bucks here or there is not going to break the bank. It's not going to ruin you financially. So don't worry about it if you want to buy them and you don't have to feel guilty about buying a handful of them. However, don't invest lots of money in it because you will lose your shirt. The second is investing in copper pennies. There are a lot of people who hoard US and Canadian one cent coins in the hopes that one day they'll be demonetized and they can melt them down for scrap and make a bunch of money on their investment. Now, I'm not saying whether that's a good or bad investment, but there's really very little risk because you're buying them at face value. So yes, there might be some opportunity cost and if it doesn't pan out, yeah, you might hurt your back while lugging them back to the bank. But essentially, when you're buying coins at face value, there's really no risk. So don't worry about it. If that's what you wanna do, go for it. And the third exception is investing in copper like any other commodity, right? If you invest in soybeans or gold or oil on the commodities exchange, there's no difference between doing that and investing in copper. Now again, I'm not saying that that's a good or bad investment. I'm just saying that the people who invest in commodities like that are not necessarily suckers. And I promised you at the beginning of the video that I would tell you a much better place to put your money than in physical copper bullion junk like this. Well, it should come as no surprise that I am recommending physical silver and gold. Good old fashioned gold and silver and you can find it at the best prices 
on the internet at sdbullion.com slash silverpicker. If you go to sdbullion.com slash silverpicker, you will see a list of my top picks for bullion products that you guys can get at some of the lowest prices available. So if you're interested, definitely check it out, sdbullion.com slash silverpicker. So, what do you think now about investing in physical copper bullion? Have you been scammed by any of these unscrupulous copper bullion dealers? If so, let me know in the comments below. We'd all like to hear about it. And if you liked this video and you enjoyed it and you learned from it, please consider giving it a like and hitting the subscribe button because I've got a lot more awesome videos about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and even personal finance coming right down the pike. So until then, stay tuned and Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You all are most definitely not suckers because you made the smart choice to spend $3 on joining my Discord server, the best coin collecting and precious metal stacking community on the internet. And that's a heck of a lot smarter than buying a one ounce bar of copper junk.